Hi everyone. In this series of videos, we're going to be making a 5C collet stop. Now, collet stops are used for production work on both manual and CNC machines, and 5C collets are used extensively on both types. The collet stop body threads into the back side of the collets, and then it has a tapped hole through the middle to accommodate this threaded stop rod. This is made out of half inch 20 all thread, and it's turned down to 230 thousandths for one inch. That allows it to clear a quarter inch collet. Of course, you shouldn't be shy about modifying this to suit your own purposes. Maybe you need it to fit inside an eighth inch collet. Feel free to turn that down further. It's actually a relatively simple project to make, and you've got pretty loose tolerances here, except for the threads. Then you have a couple of flats cut here, so you can tighten the stop in the back of a collet. So in this first video, we're going to be making the body of the collet stop. We're going to turn it down to diameter, cut our threads, drill and tap our hole, and that'll be it. I'll also go ahead and put a link to the PDF for this print in the description so everyone can make it at home. One of the most important things about this project is that every feature that we cut is going to be concentric to itself. The body, the threads, and the tapped hole. The reason is this thing is going to be rotating potentially at pretty high speeds, so we don't want it to be vibrating and we don't want it to affect our surface finish. For that reason, I've cut my stock to an inch and three quarters long. That's going to leave me plenty to grip onto here, and I can have all of this sticking out of the chuck and turn it all in one operation. The finished length is an inch and an eighth, so I want to make sure that I have more than that sticking out of the chuck. Since we're doing all this in one operation, I'll actually be able to do this pretty quickly. I'll be able to touch off on the end and face it to clean it up. I'll set that as my Z0, and that'll be the same for my length as well as the length of my threads. So I'll turn down the diameter for the body first, which is an inch and an eighth, and then I'll turn it down a half inch back for the diameter for the threads. From there, I can also go ahead and drill and tap my hole, cut my chamfer and my thread relief, and cut my threads. A quick note on the length here. My finished length from here to there should be an inch and an eighth, so I went a little bit further than that with this cut. I went to 1.15, just because when I flip this around to face all this extra material off, I don't want to end up with some weird burr there that's going to be difficult to remove. Okay, I'm at 1.221 at the moment. So let me go ahead and input that into my digital readout. Okay, I'm 20 thousandths over my target, which is exactly where I'm supposed to be, 1.145, 1.125 and a couple of tenths, yep, 1.1252. So at this point, I already know my diameter here, it's 1.125 and I've got that input into my digital readout already from when I turned this body. So it's pretty simple to just go a little bit further down to our major diameter range. And again, we already know where our Z0 is, so we just need to move a half inch back. Now our major diameter range shown on the print is 1.035 to 1.041. We'll aim for the middle just like any other tolerance, aim for 1.038. Okay, a couple of quick things here. First of all, I stopped shy on the length of my shoulder so that I can measure it and make sure that I get it right on the money. And second of all, I'm about 20 thousandths over here. And yes, indeed, I'm at 1.058, so 20 thousandths over my target diameter. Let me get a measurement on the length, and before I do that, I'm gonna break the edge on the end. I should be about 10 thousandths shy here and I am. So for my last pass I'll go ahead and turn it down to diameter as well as length. One point oh three eight and four tenths. Okay so I've got my 45 degree chamfering tool 
The chamfer at the beginning of the thread needs to be a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and touch off on this corner, move in a sixteenth of an inch on the Z. So I'm ready to cut my thread relief. Uh, this is the tool that I use for thread reliefs. It's uh, got a little flat spot on the end and then a 45 degree angle. So it cuts the thread relief and the chamfer at the same time. I've got it touched off on my shoulder here. I've got it touched off on the diameter and zeroed. And I know how far I need to go in. But I'm going to stop a little bit shy and get a measurement so I know that I am where I think I am. I'm at 952. Let's see if that did it. It did indeed. So we're good to go on the thread relief. Okay, so I'm going to set up the tool so that it's perpendicular to my part. That way I know that I'm cutting the right thread form. And to do that, I'm putting a print down below. I'm going to lower my lamp so that I can see the silhouette of my tool and the part. And you use a thread gauge and you check to make sure that the tool is actually lined up. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got my tool touched off. I've zeroed my digital readout and my dial as well as my compound. So I'm going to go ahead and feed in ten thousandths on the compound. Always remember to pull the cross feed out before you disengage the half nuts because you're not always going to be able to have a thread relief. Then I just return my cross slide to zero. Advance my compound a little bit more. This is eight thousandths in now. And then I wait for my next line on the thread dial before I engage my half nuts. So if you've watched my other videos on threading, you'll know that your threads are not going to have a sharp point. Uh, they're supposed to have a bit of a flat on the top. I should be pretty large right now. I mean, they've got a, a pretty good size flat there. But I'm going to start taking measurements so that I know where I am. So I'm measuring this with thread wires. And in order to keep from losing the two wires on the top, I put a little dab of grease on the top of the thread. That lets those two wires stick. And then I only have to handle the one down on the bottom. So we measure this just like normal and pull the mic off and I'm getting a almost 1.080 uh, 1.079 and probably 8 tenths yep with thread wires you get this little chart that tells you what size wires to use with which thread and uh, it gives you this constant here. So in this case, we're cutting 24 threads. It tells you to use the 29 thousandths wires. And the constant is something that we have to subtract from our measurement over the wires to get our pitch diameter. So what I do instead is to just go ahead and add that constant to my pitch diameter range so that I know what I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for 1.0509 to 1.0549. So that last pass was just a spring pass. I didn't adjust anything on the compound. Let me go ahead and take another measurement. Here's my dab of grease. And you don't have to worry about that grease affecting your measurement. It's really not that thick and it squeezes out of the way. And it doesn't affect the thread cutting either. If anything, it helps. And my mic reading now looks like I'm 1.068 and probably 5 or 6 tenths. So the top of my range over the wires is 1.0549. So I'm still a little bit off. 
Don't make the mistake of thinking that, oh, I'm 14 thousandths oversized, I need to move 14 thousandths on the dial. That's not true because since you're cutting a V-shaped thread, uh, each time you go in, you're actually increasing the size of that V considerably, and it, uh, it takes more off than you think. And I'm now at 1.062 and probably 8 tenths, 7 tenths. I'm just going to take a measurement after every pass. At some point you're going to want to start testing this with a 5C collet. You always want to test things with the mating parts. And I will say that the pitch diameter range given on the print for this actually makes the fit quite loose. I find that there's a lot of variance in the size of threads on the insides of collets. Uh, so if you make it to where it fits into one, it may be too tight in another. So again, that was a, a regular cut and a spring cut. We're getting very close. We're at 1.058 and probably 8 or 9 tenths, 8 tenths. We are really close now. Uh, 1.055 and 7 tenths. That's about a thousandth too big. And it's really important that you remember that it's very easy to skip over this range. So I'm just going to take a thousandth of an inch on my cut and hopefully not go too deep. So that's actually put me right at the top of the range. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and call it good because like I said, these things generally are pretty loose in their collets. The measurement by the way is 1.054 and 8 tenths. So let's try it with the mating part. Like I said, very very loose in the collet. Um, the pitch diameter range isn't actually uh, published anywhere, so I just kind of came up with it for the print by measuring commercially available collet stops, and I measured about a half a dozen of them, um, and they are all pretty loose. So it fits the mating part, I'm going to go ahead and call this good. By the way, you might find that the half inch length between this shoulder and there is maybe a little too long for some collets. Not all collets have the threads cut very deeply into them. Uh, so sometimes they actually bottom out before you reach this shoulder. The collet stop still works though. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap the hole. I'm starting it out with a spot drill. I've got my lathe running at 1200 RPM, which is as fast as it'll go. So I've said it in my other videos about drilling and tapping. You always, 100% of the time, want to put a chamfer on the edge of the hole before you tap it. Otherwise, you end up with this huge burr at the beginning of the thread that's very difficult to remove without damaging the threads. So I'm about to tap the hole. I'm going to put a fair amount of oil on this, and just like in my other videos, I've got the tailstock loose. It's free to slide. I've also got the tailstock quill extended almost all the way. That way, as it's pulling in, the tailstock is not going to run into the carriage because of the thread. And just throw it into reverse and it'll feed back out. So that's it for this part. I've got it uh, all turned down. Everything should be nice and concentric, so it should be pretty well balanced. And we'll go ahead and stop this video here. In the next one, I'm going to flip it around and I'll grip onto this. I'll face off all this extra that I left so I had something to grip onto, and then I'll mill the two flats. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.